Hi, everybody. Just giving everyone a moment to log on and get set up with their audio before we get started. Okay, great. I'm the admissions director for the LGO program, Leaders for Global Operations here at MIT. And thank you all for joining our online information session and student panel today. I am joined by some of my LGO colleagues in admissions, Pam Searle, who's going to be sharing more about the admissions process later in the presentation, um, as well as Sharona Bollinger, who's going to be helping answer your questions behind the scenes and helping moderate our panel at the end of our Q&A session. So I also have a fantastic group of student panelists that I'm going to introduce in just a moment. Um, but first, before we get started in discussing the LGO program, um, a couple of things. First of all, um, if you have questions that pop up throughout our presentation, please feel free to submit them via the Q&A section of your Zoom session. I think you all have access to it, but let us know if you're having any issues with that. We'll try to answer as many questions as possible. Um, if you can please, you know, keep them general and take advantage of the uh, opportunity to ask our current students some questions that you have about the program and their experiences here too. And uh, like I said, we'll try and get to as many as we can with, with our one hour together. Um, so before we start the, um, the session and introducing our panelists, I first wanted to sh um, a brief video about the LGO program. So if you could kick back and relax for about a minute and a half, um, this is a little overview for you to enjoy. When I got the call about LGO, I was so excited. I had a lot of trouble sleeping that night and started making plans to move to Boston. When I first found out, I wanted to give everybody a high five in the room. I couldn't believe it. Like I immediately, right after I hung up the phone, I called my mom. And I called all my friends, I called all my family, and I wanted to let them know that I was going to school. First thoughts, wow, this is actually going on. I was really excited, it was really awesome news for me. I was so excited, I was like, I can't wait to start the LGO program. But I was definitely really excited about being able to come out to MIT. LGO, I thought, had the perfect curriculum to bridge leadership with technical development. I wanted to take my career in a different direction from consulting to be more the integration of um, business and engineering. I chose MIT's LGO program because of the unique way that it combines engineering and business disciplines to problem solve. I don't want to be in that intersection between business and engineering in a position that I can push for a change. When I came for Open House, I really got to meet a lot of the students that I would possibly be my classmates. And I really enjoyed meeting them because of the fact that they were all from a lot of different industries, had a lot of different experience and a lot of different passions. Even being here for the first week, I have already learned so much from my classmates. It's been great being able to meet all of them and hang out with them and really kind of have a really close-knit community. And already a week into it, I feel like I've made real connections with 45 people and started the process to learn from them, which I know is just going to continue for the next two years. Great, okay. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that video. I'm feeling pretty pumped up about LGO. I hope you are too. Um, so next we're going to talk a little to our student panelists. I just want to do a quick introduction before we jump in. Um, and as you can see, some of our panelists are not going to be students for much longer. They're going to be graduating soon. Um, so congratulations to Nalaka and Randy. Um, and maybe you guys could go first. And then Juliet and Monica, you can introduce yourselves and just share um, you know, your name, where you're from, which engineering school you were a part of, and, and what you were doing before you joined the LGO program. Uh, so Nalaka, do you want to go first? Hi everyone, um, my name is Nalaka. So I grew up in Sri Lanka and then uh, in the United States for undergraduate degree. Afterwards, I joined the Boeing company. That's where I was right before I came to LGO. My function was in engineering before coming to LGO and then I'm going back to the Boeing company after graduating uh, pretty soon. And then I'm going back into operations. Great, thank you. 
Uh, Randy, you want to go next? Hi, everyone. My name is Randy Stein. I uh, am from Pittsburgh. I went to Pitt for undergrad in chemical engineering and then worked in Houston for five years with Dow Chemical as an engineer there. Uh, came to LGO and was part of the chemical engineering department here. And then uh, after graduation, I'm actually going to be working for Wayfair as an operations manager in Cincinnati. Fantastic. Thanks. Uh, Juliet, you want to go next? Oh, Juliet, I don't know if you can I hear originally, Oh, can you hear me? Sorry. Yes, we can hear you now. Sorry about that. Okay, I'll do a quick start over. Uh, I'm Juliet. I'm a second year, 21, Aero Astro. Um, I come from Phoenix, Arizona originally, but I've lived in the Boston area for the past 10 years because um, I came up here for undergraduate. I went to Wellesley College and Olin College of Engineering for my undergraduate. Um, and before I joined LGO, I spent uh, most of my time in the self-driving car industry, about, about five years working on self-driving cars. So that's my background. Great, thank you. Okay, Monica, your turn. Hi, um, can you hear me actually? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, perfect. So I'm Monica, um, LGO 21, I'm in CE department. I'm originally from Indonesia, lived there my entire life basically and came here for LGO. Um, and before this, I was working for three years as a consultant in Boston Consulting Group. So that's my background. Great. Thank you all so much. So uh, we're going to talk to them throughout the presentation today. <laughs> Thank you for introducing yourselves. Uh, before we get into some of the specifics about the LGO program, um, I wanted to first just talk a little bit about it generally. Um, here's a visual that I think is pretty handy. The LGO program uh, is a two-year dual degree program in which you earn both your master's in engineering and your MBA at MIT. You are a full student of the Sloan MBA program and the MIT um, engineering program for which you're a part of. And, um, you know, what's great about that is, you know, being enrolled also within just the specific LGO program itself. We have our own LGO staff for student services, uh, career networking, financing, helping with courses like action learning. Uh, this is in addition to the access you will have as a student to the career resources, clubs, and other extracurricular opportunities at both MIT Sloan and your designated school of engineering. This degree is a pairing that's really special because uh, the LGO program has been around for over 30 years and stemmed from the demand for striking a balance in career preparation between having an engineering um, mastery and, and business disciplines combined. And as you hone your technical skills to solve and implement problems, particularly in operations, technology, and manufacturing, you are also gaining the tools be to become an innovative leader to make direct impact within your industry. So this program is designed for students who, who get things done, who are the implementers. And you know, generally it's a student who sees a problem and knows how to lead a team to solve that problem. Um, that's what this degree can help prepare students for. Um, and so let me show you the next slide here. We'll talk a little bit about the curriculum. Once again, the program is two years long and your classes over this time are interwoven with Sloan and the engineering department, um, again, for which you're a part of. And to speak to that a bit, you can select and apply to one of seven different engineering school options when you apply to the program. The LGO program itself begins in the summer in June each year. Um, and starts with some LGO core classes that generally consist of um, areas that focus on statistics and machine learning, um, leadership programming throughout. It starts in your core that summer. Lean tools and optimization and ops management as well. There, um, there have also been plant treks around the Boston area and, and domestically that happen uh, sometimes in, in the summer too. So LGO students complete the summer course and then they focus more on their MBA core classes, which they also complete 
uh, with fellow MBA students over one semester, and that starts in the fall after your first summer of the program. Um, after your core, the, the program does allow you to tailor your courses to what you're more interested in, whether that's, you know, medical devices to um, additive manufacturing. The program, um, particularly, you know, it's designed to offer flexibility in completing the courses that you feel are most relevant for your continued career success. And, you know, speaking to Sloan in particular, there's a lot of flexibility available if, if, you, uh, if you want it and are able to take advantage of that. Um, LGO students can and, and have and, and do complete the certificates that are available. Um, this is more of a, a more formalized concentration that you can walk away with in one of three areas that include sustainability, healthcare, and data analytics. Um, in addition, as an MBA student, you can take up to three of their electives outside of Sloan, anywhere at MIT or at Harvard. Um, looking a little on the engineering side too, you know, each department has their own course listings and requirements to fulfill, uh, but your engineering core classes will also really kind of take off and, and start in that fall semester as well, that first fall after your summer. So um, I'm gonna, gonna stop talking for a little bit and, and see if we can ask some questions about the curriculum experience to our panelists. Um, first thing I wanted to get your thoughts on um, about the core classes, the core experience, and you can speak to this from, you know, whichever lens you prefer, LGO core or engineering or your Sloan classes, but um, what are some key learnings? What, what were some of the takeaways and, and was that core curriculum helpful for you guys? Um, let's see. So maybe, Monica, do you want to go first this time? Hey, sorry, actually, um, can, can you give me like five minutes? I need to um, reply something quickly, sorry. Absolutely, yeah, that sounds good. Um, Juliet, do you wanna go first? Sure. <clears throat> so um, I just, the, the only full semester that I've done on campus is my course semester, uh, since I'm uh, currently on internship in my first year. Uh, so my course semester, uh, of course, you have your four main MBA core that you have to do, and then you have the option for electives uh, and you can you should start with some engineering courses right away. Um, of course, you don't technically have to, but you certainly should um, in your first semester. So I took one and then uh, you have the option to take MBA electives. So I also took an MBA elective uh, and that was a quote core elective, which means that as a first year, I got kind of preference to sign up for it. Um, it was really great. With the core semester, you get to have your core team. So you get uh, a team of six people uh, who are in those four classes with you all the time uh, and you're assigned assignments with them. And that helps a lot. For me, I was personally taking a very, very difficult engineering course um, that will hopefully be the most difficult I take while I'm at MIT. And it was a lot of work. Uh, it was about 16 to 20 hours a week for just that class. So for me to have my core team really helping me through the core subjects, which I don't have a business background, so it was really useful for me to still learn that content, but do it with people who have very good business backgrounds. That was really, really helpful for me to start dipping my toes in the MBA experience. So I was able to challenge myself in engineering while kind of getting uh, the right baseline for my MBA classes that I hope that I can build on um, after this. Great, thank you. That was very helpful. Um, and, and it is a good point you bring up too that depending on the engineering courses or any of the courses, they do vary quite a bit as far as commitment outside of the classroom. And, and that's a bit of a, a balancing act our students have to manage. Um, Nalika, would you like to talk about this? Maybe core is a little further back in the distance for you. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, yeah, Julia did a great job talk about uh, talking about the MBA core. So I'll talk a little bit more about the summer core, uh, where the LGOs get together for the first time. Um, that was a great eye-opening experience for me, uh, especially when taking classes in lean manufacturing. And then we have another class called High Velocity Edge that opened my eyes into like what different operations can do in an organization. Um, example, like putting the right processes in place not everybody understanding what the what needs to be done like so that makes a remarkable difference in the performance of an organization so that was that was key and two other subjects that we covered during summer that had the most impact number one was um, uh, 
called the uh, machine learning um, and AI class. That was fantastic because I didn't, I did not have any experience before that. So it really kind of um, had a great impact on me. And another class that I had was optimization, um, which is also a good way to understand, okay, how do you think about the constraints of an organization, not just the kind of a, a direct problem that you have, and then how do you think about your, what you're trying to maximize for? So those other, you know, the, the coursework wise had the, the most impact. And then similar to MBA core that Julia talked about, we also have a LGO core team that we work together. That's a great time to bond with your classmates because you'll be working with them as LGOs within the two years and then these relationships will last a lifetime, right? Because uh, you really come become uh, close friends through that. So, yeah, that's my experience in LGO Co. Great, thank you. Um, Randy or Monica, anything else to add that, that hasn't already been discussed? I, <clears throat> I think just to add, um, I can provide a little background for those on the call that might be chemical engineers. So I just wanna make clear you don't have, so the chemical engineering program in LGO is actually quite small. There were only three of us last year and then the 21s, there's only one person, um, but there's quite a few, you know, undergrad chemical engineers that now have shifted to civil and mechanical. So um, I would encourage, you know, if, if you're having doubts maybe about some of the description and the chemical side that uh, there are a lot of cool engineering courses that you can take on the mechanical that I couldn't because I had to do, you know, uh, chemical core uh, courses. So um, I would say for chemical, it's definitely a heavier, uh, if you're interested in biomed, biotech, definitely go that route. But if you're looking to maybe get into a different field, get into operations, finance, uh, you know, I would encourage to explore switching or, or expanding your base, maybe another engineering uh, background, so. That's very helpful advice, thank you. Um, yeah, actually I wanna also talk about the core, LGO core during the summer curriculum. One of the, um, one of the things that I was afraid the most when I saw the curriculum was about the programming, which is in Python. Um, because I've never programmed before, so I was just like, oh my god, what should I do? Like, um, can can I get this on time? Like, can I, um, basically take the address the uh, Python programming and something like that? And apparently, like, uh, you don't need to worry about that because the um the theory of the class is really really nice. Like, the pace is just right, and you will get it. Like, I'm I'm assuring you, you will get it. So yeah, and it's gonna be really useful. Um, especially in your engineering classes after that, because like most of the engineering classes actually use programming. Great, thank you all. That was that was some really good insights, and it, it also just highlights the uh, the importance of the core because the students who we enroll in the LGO program each each year are coming from. Um, very diverse industry backgrounds and perspectives. And so having, you know, some do have a business background, some don't, some are more on the technical side. So the core um, that's embedded in these, you know, within Sloan and engineering and LGO are helping to give you that foundation, regardless of, of what your background is. So moving forward, let's talk a little bit about collaboration across MIT. There are a vast array of ways to get involved in MIT. It's a huge community um, and a collaborative one at that. And I think this is something that our panelists can address more um, in a minute. It, it does take planning and time management to ensure that you're getting involved with everything you want to while balancing your coursework. Um, wanted to share a few examples of some cross campus opportunities out there. Um, one in particular is the Martin Trust Center for MIT Entrepreneurship focusing on educating students in innovation-driven entrepreneurship with a significant focus on stewardship as well. There is, um, who claims to be the largest reach on campus, the Energy Club, a central platform for discussions around energy, um, different conferences and networking opportunities specifically focused on um, energy. 
There's also the sustainability initiative through Sloan. Um, their curriculum introduces students to basic sustainability concepts and even a lunch series to uh, provide that chance for deeper engagement. If, regardless if you were pursuing the sustainability certificate or not, this is an opp opportunity to get involved um, in that focus too, as well as other coursework specifically in sustainability. Um, and then, you know, more broadly speaking, as a student at LGO, you are taking classes with your fellow LGO classmates, Sloanies, um, engineering students. You're also going to meet other PhD students in your courses. Uh, there's also ways to interact with uh, various mentorship programs, if that's something you're interested in getting involved with. One example is the, the Gordon Engineer Leaders Program, GEL, that um, some of our LGOs can be mentors for MIT undergrads, if that's something um, that you'd be interested in doing as well. So this is just a, a tiny sample of the ways that you can get involved and in, in different avenues that you can go. Um, to our panelists, I wonder if we can talk a little bit about, you know, first, taking um, a step back and kind of putting yourselves in the shoes of our listeners, sort of thinking about LGO and, and if it's the right program for you, how did being a part of MIT contribute to your decision to enroll in the LGO program? Was having that accessibility to get involved in the greater MIT campus um, an important factor when you were making your graduate school decision? Um, maybe who would like to, uh, Juliet, you're nodding. I, I'm gonna go, would you wanna like to address that first? <laughs> Sure, and I apologize in advance. I do have a puppy behind me, so she whines, I apologize. But um, yeah, so one of the great parts, at least uh, in my experience with LGO, is that uh, you do uh, get to be in, um, integrated in both sides of the campus as much as or as little as you want to. As an Aero Astro, I'm automatically part of a research lab on the engineering side, and that's been really, really great for me both in my academic side and doing my engineering coursework, but also making connections with people who are getting their PhDs right now and talking to them about some different research ideas I have. Uh, and especially since I'm somebody who wants to be an entrepreneur after this, um, it's kind of nice to kind of get those ideas percolating, especially on the engineering side. And then I hope that I can do, uh, you know, use a lot of the resources on the business side at the Martin Trust Center and things like that in my second year to kind of bring, tie those two things together. So that's been a really great opportunity that I get to kind of meet people on both sides and grow my network in two different directions, but in, in a way that really serves me very well. Uh, another great thing that I've been able to do uh, that's kind of cross campus has been with Nalika. We've uh, put together the Robo AI conference this year, which didn't end up happening because of COVID, but uh, we're very excited for it to happen next year. And that was a a conference that we were putting together about, you know, how do robotics and AI technologies help uh, serve business needs and help businesses grow in a certain uh, avenue. So we were able to have Sloan people, uh, pure MBAs on that conference. We were able to have PhDs uh, help us with that conference. And then, of course, a bunch of LGOs. So it was able to kind of reach out to different parts of campus, make connections at different parts of campus, uh, and bring everybody together in something that interests us uh, overall. So that was a really awesome opportunity, and I hope that that's something we can continue in my second year especially, uh, and then we can grow that even more. So I've had a great experience uh, kind of being both sides of my brain of the engineering and the business. So uh, I wouldn't think, uh, I don't know if I would have gotten this anywhere else, but I'm very happy I get at MIT. Great, thank you. So uh, anyone else like to talk about if, if this was a factor in, in deciding to come here and how you've been involved in extracurriculars? I think for me, um, I was coming in and I, I still, I was unsure of what I wanted to do and I still am a little bit, but what set Salgio apart when I was in uh, y'all's shoes and you know, sitting there thinking where I wanted to apply, was being involved in that engineering side of the campus is something that you're not going to be able to get from any other program, uh, especially with the reputation and um, kind of people you'll interact with on the engineering side. Uh, at the graduate level, uh, those people are pretty amazing. So um, I didn't know all of that when I was applying, but I, I ended up only applying to LGO because you know, I wanted to come and get uh, a business education, but being a part of MIT was that that was something special that I don't think 
uh, I saw in a lot of other programs. Yeah. To quickly build on Randy's point, um, I'm passionate about future of transportation. So I wanted to get involved with uh, the Hyperloop competition. MIT team had done really well the past years. And this year also we put together a team. Through that I met so many really, really smart people and specializing in each different areas of engineering, uh, PhDs, postdocs, and uh, yeah, having these conversations was really, really helpful. And one was one very inspiring person was the youngest member of our team who was 13 years old and he was working at Media Lab as a futurist and the incredibly, incredibly smart genius. Uh, and he was teaching me about rocketry. So, uh, that, that was incredible. And then, so the, my point was there was like the people that you come into contact with is this incredible at MIT. Uh, I just want to add like one more thing. Actually, um, like uh, I, your involvement is not limited to the department that you're enrolled in. Because for example, I'm enrolled in the C in CE department, but now I'm actively um, involved in a D lab project. Um, so it's it's just like so. At the beginning, I was thinking like, oh my god, how how should I be involved? Like, uh, how can I get how how can I how can I know people and etc. Actually, people are very 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 approachable. So um, yeah, you can just like email them and then like ask them what they're doing and um, basically have some catch up and eventually you can be uh, working together with them. And one other uh, basic thing that I uh, that, that that actually was one of my um, like one of my points to get into MIT is that everything in campus is walking distance, <laughs> so it's just like it's so easy to get to anywhere. So yeah, that's like one of my that's like one of my wish lists basically back then. Great, thank you. It sounds like you've all really been able to take advantage of your time here and get involved, which is great to hear. Um, another question just uh, similar to this is, is the balancing aspect we, of having a pretty rigorous curriculum. Um, how do you manage the schoolwork with, with getting involved in extracurriculars and, you know, and then on top of it, having an internship, which we'll talk about in a bit too, but um, maybe some, some advice or learnings from that, that school work-life balance that you could share? I can get us started. So I came to the LGO program with my family. So I have a eight month, she was, my daughter was eight months old when she uh, came with, with us to Cambridge. Um, yeah, at, so I had to set some boundaries of you know, what my working hours are and when do I spend my time with my family. So how I approached it was, this was a, 60 hour a week job, right? So I would get here um, on the weekdays really early, put in, you know, have a, about two, two, two and a half hours in the morning for homework. And then by six o'clock, um, I'm home. And then afterwards, I don't have to worry about, I don't worry about homework. Uh, and then the, the, my core team and my uh, NGO core team and MBA core team, they were very understanding saying, okay, we're not going to have any discussion or meetings after 6 p.m. And then on the weekend, I don't work as well. So just, I get up really early, put in about three hours before my daughter gets up and then do that Saturday, Sunday. And then that was, that was a good working rhythm that kind of got, got me through the two years. So it's definitely, it's doable. Great advice. I wish I was as much of a morning person as you are. Anyone else have some some advice for for our listeners? Yeah, I mean, don't just dis get discouraged if you're not a morning person because I'm definitely not. And I think you all will get your work done. Um, in terms of narrowing down what you do at Sloan and in LGO, I think it's difficult to do everything you might come across because there are so many cool things. But um, again, you certainly don't have to decide all of this now, but a, a good time in core semesters to kind of figure out, okay, what do you want to get out of your experience? Like, 
uh, Juliet said she wants to get into entrepreneurship. Um, a friend of mine, uh, well, my roommate also is joining a startup afterwards, and he was in the chemical engineering program, so you can do that. But if you start to get involved with some of these bigger items, you're not going to have as much time, you know, to to get involved in other areas of Sloan. So I'd say like the major areas are um, energy, sustainability, like our our classmate 20s, uh, Monica ran the uh, energy, um, what is it, the en energy, well, she she headed the energy club, but there's also a huge event. Clean energy price, clean energy price. Yes, that one. Um, and yeah, anybody involved in a startup, that's a lot of time. And then if, you know, I was involved in ops club because I like operations and uh, led the um, op operation simulation competition, which isn't as much work, but again, uh, you'll find in core, you'll have time to, okay, decide what what is a good area for me to focus on. And I found it didn't interfere with internship at all. So um, when you're on internship, you're kind of away from campus. Yeah, like one thing that I learned actually is to delegate, because like um, some of the work that you will have is um, a team, team project or teamwork so it's really like learning how to delegate and manage your team and then the other learnings that I found is like don't worry to ask people because you're, like, you're not in this alone so if if you're like you're stuck on like homework or something like that don't don't think that you need to um, do it uh, on your own just like feel free to ask like to ask people ask your friend ask your TA ask your professor for like guidance and something it will make your life so much better Great, thank you guys, that's very helpful. Uh, we're gonna move on now to a, a little bit, um, kind of a good transition actually to some practical application and, and talking about action learning and internships and all of the experiential components of your, your time in LGO. Um, you know, MIT's motto, let's start with, with there, it's, you know, mens et manus, translating from Latin to mind and hand. And so with intention, MIT's founders were promoting that education is for practical application. And so with that in mind, you will find a very hands-on approach in your LGO experiences too. Um, LGOs you take a product design course, which is often working with a company or a startup um, or a new product. It, it, it covers a lot of different aspects too of, of um, things to consider around design process, design for manufacturing, user needs, product arch architecture, that type of thing, um, prototyping simulation. And so, you know, that's a, one huge part of just the curriculum that you can have a little bit more of a hands on learning and, and working with um, a real company, or, you know, real problems We're using their data, um, pretty useful too. But um, a very significant experiential learning opportunity with an LGO is the six month internship that is a part of the program structure um, in which every LGO student is guaranteed an internship at one of our partner companies. Uh, we'll talk about the partner companies in just a little bit. But um, talk about one big action learning experience. And, and so this is a, a huge part of, of your, your learning on the job. It's the foundation of developing your thesis, which is required to, to graduate from the LGO program too. And so I think our students can definitely talk about what that's been like and, and how the process was, especially for you know, those who are graduating now, just having that full perspective of, of what the internship um, experience involved. Um, but before we jump into to talking to them about it, there's also other action learning labs that are particularly, you know, through MIT Sloan. And this is another way to gain some hands-on experience in different subject areas. Generally, the action learning labs start in a lecture setting and then work remotely and, and on-site with host organizations to solve real business challenges. And um, some popular action learning labs that have, you know, traditionally been popular for our LGO students include Analytics Lab and Global Entrepreneurship Lab, but there's many more that you can check out as well. Um, and even more broadly speaking, you know, not just within Sloan or Engineering, but MIT, of course, there's other ways to get involved. Uh, Monica, I think, mentioned that earlier that the D Lab um, works with people from around the world to develop an advanced 
um, collaborative approaches and practical solutions to global poverty challenges. So that's just one example of another way if you want to have a little bit more of a hands-on experience and, and balance out some of your other curriculum. Um, but that in mind, I'm, I'm going to maybe pass it off to the panelists at this point and talk first about the internship experience. And, you know, maybe Nalika or Randy could start about, you know, how that helped. Um, how did you apply your skills? Was this a beneficial part of, of your experience in the LGO program? Um, and then we can talk to uh, Julia. You're, you're in the thick of it now. <laughs> Monica, I uh, would love to hear from you as well. So, um, yeah, maybe Randy, do you want to start first? Uh, sure. I mean, so I, my background was in chemicals and, uh, of course, uh, most of the, you'll find that most of the chemical partner companies, uh, you have to do an internship with a partner company that's kind of aligned with your department. Uh, so, because they're the ones that's going to approve the thesis. So most of the chemical companies right now are biotech. So I ended up doing my, um, internship with Sanofi. So it was an entirely new field for me. I worked in a lab a little bit, but never growing, you know, now I was growing like cells on this uh, state of the art um, bio system called the Amber that, you know, I had to learn within a couple months. Um, so it really, I mean, it, it more like expanded my base rather than got me maybe depth or something that uh, I, I could have, um, you know, gotten more involved in, but it, in terms of that, that was kind of cool. Like I got a really cool project with a completely different industry. And now I do have some background, like I wrote an entire thesis on it. So if I ever did want to, you know, transition to another industry, that's just kind of another, uh, hey point I have with, uh, some of the LGO partner companies. So it really opened my doors there. Um, but uh, interested to hear more uh, from Nalika what, what you thought. So when I was looking at uh, options for the internship, I looked mainly um, companies that are outside of the U.S. because I really wanted to kind of leverage the global aspect of LGO. So there were options in Germany, a partner company there called MR, uh, and then there's Hong, one in Hong Kong, uh, there's, there was Spain, there's uh, UK. So those are the, the my you know, top priorities. And I was very fortunate enough to get the internship at uh, MR in Regensburg, Germany. It was in both ways, a cultural perspective that was fantastic. I got a chance to learn a little bit about the culture, the, the language, and also travel a little bit. And from from experience perspective, uh, it was well aligned with what I want to learn more about. That is about new business development and competitive strategy. Uh, so all, all of that kind of uh, came together for my internship and I, I really enjoyed it working with the team over there. And then, and yeah, I had a great experience there. So um, as, uh, as I mentioned before, I'm currently in the middle of my internship. Uh, and I'm working at the Boeing company. Uh, I should generally be in Seattle, uh, but I'm back home in Boston uh, because of the COVID crisis. Um, so of course my internship has been a little uh, disrupted, um, but it, it's not too bad uh, for, for the work I'm doing. So um, when I was looking for internships, uh, since I was coming from self-driving cars and going into Aero Astro as my uh, engineering discipline, I wanted to leverage a lot of the previous knowledge I had and apply it to aerospace. Uh, so I really wanted to work in autonomous systems uh, or robotics overall, uh, and especially at an aerospace company. So there's uh, a few different options for that. Uh, so I targeted mostly the Boeing company, uh, Bell Helicopter, and Amazon, because um, Amazon does have a drone program. Unfortunately, not quite set up for our internship processes, so that one fell by the wayside a little bit. Um, but between Bell and the Boeing Company, there were actually some interesting options uh, when I talked to different partner companies in the summer uh, of, of what they were thinking for internship proposals. Uh, the actual proposal process was a little uh, different for me because I'm an Aero Astro, and we can get into that another day. Uh, but I ended up getting 
the absolute perfect internship for me. Um, I'm able to work in commercial autonomous systems within the Boeing company, and I'm specifically working on um, proposing safety frameworks for said uh, autonomous systems. And that's what my background is in, is in system integration safety. So I'm super interested in the topic and I get to apply it to a new platform, into, into a, uh, an aviation platform, which is not something I've done before. Um, but I get to leverage a lot of my existing knowledge and I really love the research I'm doing. So I've been able to direct my research in exactly the way that I want. And I'm really being able to write the thesis that I, that I want to write. So I'm really excited about that. Um, so, uh, so far it's going really well. Uh, I'm again, halfway through the internship right now. So it's still, uh, I haven't really written anything of my thesis, um, but, uh, the work has been really great. It's been great to kind of learn about the network within the Boeing company. There's a ton of LGOs in there and they're really, really, really supportive. Um, even as kind of the world is, is, is changing a lot right now. Um, so, so it's been a really good experience so far and I, I'm really excited to, to write a thesis that is meaningful to me and is something that I can actually be proud of after I leave LGL. Yeah, for me, actually, I haven't started my internship. I'm a June star, so I'm going to start it in 13 days. I'm going to go to Amgen. It's in Cambridge, so I don't need to move. Yay. Um, and it will start virtually. And then after like one or two months, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see if we can do it in person. But basically what I, um, so my background has nothing to do with healthcare. I was a petroleum engineer and then I was a consultant. And then I was just like trying to change my career path into like healthcare because I was very interested in it. And uh, what people say is actually like people in um partner companies are basically very helpful and they will help you to understand the base, even like the very basic thing. So I don't need to worry and I'm not worried if I live in that. So yeah, I'm gonna head there soon. Great, thank you all. Uh, you know, for the sake of time, I think I'm gonna speak through the next couple of slides. Um, it's just, there's so much great content and, and insights that you're all sharing. I think each of these slides could be their own webinar, but um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about some different areas of LGO and then we'll get to um, admissions components and then if we have time for maybe one or two general questions, we'll, we'll go from there. But um, one thing, you know, that's very important to highlight and a key part of the LGO experience are the 25 partner companies whose logos you see here. This is another very unique component of our dual degree program. Our partner companies um, fund the program and make it possible to provide on average at least 50% tuition fellowship for every admitted candidate without um, you know, previous sponsorship funding. So um, that's a, it's a huge differentiator of, of having that type of financial support for every one of our LGO students who's enrolled in the program. Um, there's also, as we mentioned before, a guaranteed internship with one of our partner companies for that for each student. Um, every LGO secures an internship. And you know, with that, there's instant networking opportunities and mentorship that come with having such close ties to each of these partner companies. Um, thinking about career steps, it's usually between 40 and 50% of our graduating LGOs who go to work for one of our partner companies right, right after graduating. Um, and so, you know, they, they do play a very significant role in the career development of our LGO students. Just talking a little bit about the community and how interesting you have as far as a layout of different, different levels, really. Um, LGO students, you know, each year we enroll a class usually between 45 and 50 students. And it's a smaller community that really promotes close-knit bonds with you and your classmates. You'll find the LGO staff is a very supportive network here for you too to assist with any academics or just overall student experience needs. Um, we're here to help. And you know, then you take it to the next level when you join the MBA program in the fall, you're joining a larger global management network with about 400 other MBA students who become part of your community too. Um, and uh, engineering departments, they, you know, they all uh, operate a little bit differently, but you're also encouraged to integrate with your engineering department and, and you know, you're a student within that program as well and get involved with extracurriculars and other opportunities on the engineering side too. 
Um, so you really have a nice balance between having a, a close-knit core group to support you and, and just having that access to the networks within Sloan Engineering, MIT, and the alumni networks that come with that too. Um, so it's something neat to think about, uh, just the different levels of connections you have across different schools and the different focuses at MIT. Um, so before I turn it over to Pam, I uh, want to ask our panelists to think about one word to describe their LGO experience while we talk about admissions. And um, while you mull that over, I'm going to pass it over to my colleague Pam, who's going to talk a little bit about what the application process is like. Um, great. Hi, everyone. I'm Pam Searle. Um, as Eileen mentioned, I'm just going to spend a few minutes uh, discussing the LGO application process. So for LGO, we have two application deadlines. Um, the deadlines have not been set for our next cycle, um, but they'll be set this summer sometime in July. Um, round one is typically in late September or early October, and round two is typically in early December. For LGO, you just submit one application. In round one, you can apply through the MBA system, and for round two, you can apply either through the MBA system or the engineering system. It doesn't matter to us where you apply. Um, it comes through the same for admissions, but it's really what you want for your backup plan. So for example, if you apply through the MBA system and we're not able to admit you into LGO, um, you'd be automatically considered for the full-time MBA program for their round two pool. And it works similarly on the engineering side. The advantage to applying in round one is that it gives your application a little bit longer shelf life. Um, for example, you could be waitlisted in round one, um, reevaluated, and then admitted in round two. However, it's best to apply when your application will be the strongest and when you're ready. So certainly don't rush just to apply in round one. Um, and on the next slide, we have our application components from last year. As I mentioned, the new applications will be open in July. Um, we don't anticipate any major changes this year to the application or timeline due to the COVID situation. Um, so it will look similar to this. It's a pretty lean application, as you can see. Uh, this past year, we only asked for two letters of recommendation, one professional letter and one technical letter. We accept either the GRE or the GMAT. Um, the breakdown is about 50-50 for our students. Um, we get lots of questions about the 60 second video statement. Um, the purpose of the video is really just to assess your personal presence and it'll give you a chance to share, some way, share something with the admissions committee that we may not know by just reading your application. Um, the videos certainly don't have to be fancy. They're not meant to be edited. Um, you know, you can just be at your desk and that's totally fine. Or, you know, some people are water skiing or hiking and that's fine too. Just make sure that we can hear your audio. Um, we use a very holistic evaluation process at LGO, and each application is reviewed by the LGO admissions team, the MBA admissions team, and also um, the chosen engineering department. During our review process, we're scoring you on a number of different competencies. So for example, we're looking um, for how well you work on a team, how you solve scientific problems, how you perform in advanced STEM coursework, and how you communicate change and get buy-in from those around you. We typically interview about 25 to 30% of all applicants and we use a behavioral based model. So we'll be asking you how to um, sort of like draw on past experiences to describe how you manage different types of situations. Um, and I just have a couple of tips for the application. Um, my first tip would be to choose the recommenders who truly know you the very best and make sure at least one of your recommenders can discuss your engineering abilities, um, either in the classroom or in a applied situation. My second tip is to be clear and precise about your academic interests within your engineering statement of purpose. And my final tip is just to really be yourself. We're looking for authenticity and we want to find out who you are and what you're passionate about. We're certainly not looking for, um, you know, a formula or, you know, one set of experiences. So um, really just be yourself. And so with that, I think we'll head back to the panel. Great, thank you, Pam. Very helpful information. And um, you know, if you have questions about your individual um, candidacy, please feel free to reach out to us. We're happy to help. Um, this is our email address on the slide. There's also a lot of information on our website too um, that you can check out. So I am dying to hear back from our panelists on the one words they selected um, to describe their LGO experience. Who would like to go first? Aside from my cat. 
I, I can go first then. Uh, the word that comes to my mind is uh, transformative. It's been incredible two years. As I mentioned earlier, the, the people that I've come across, the, the professors and especially the classmates made a huge impact on my kind of way of thinking. So I, that's definitely the, the word that comes to my mind. That is a good one. Thank you. Who would like to share next? Uh, yeah, I'm you, terrible at answering these questions, but actually we did a word cloud on our yearbook, uh, exiting yearbook, and the number one response was fam. So um, I think I was surprised when I heard that, but it, I mean, it, it does make sense. I, I think the one of the great, the greatest thing about the LGO program is Look, if you go to another MBA program, you're going to meet people and, and you'll be involved in any activities, but LGO really is a tight-knit group and uh, you're not going to have to worry about forming a support network or uh, getting close with the people in the program. So um, that's definitely, I think that's true. And that's why it was our number one word. Yeah, I was gonna also say family, because <laughs> yeah, the um basically the, the connection is great. I mean, like a lot of new friends, we're close together, and like another that because that word is already taken, I would say like colorful, because um basically like a lot of back, uh like a lot of different backgrounds are coming together, and you can enrich like each other's experience, which is amazing, and yeah, you can just like learn together, grow together, and yeah, that's it's been awesome. Mine will be slightly less emotional, I suppose. I guess I wish I had gone with like the more family route, but uh, I, uh, the word that came to mind for me was collaborative. Um, the summer team that I had, uh, which I love my summer team so much, our theme for, or our slogan for the summer was collaborate to graduate. Um, and honestly, I don't, I don't think I could get through the program without the LGO family. Um, I you know whether it's academics or not academics i've needed their support emotionally mentally uh and all that jazz so the lgo family has helped me uh and 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 collaborated with me on so many different things uh i, I can't imagine trying to go through this with anyone else so i chose collaborative but i guess i will put like a family after that <laughs> or something of the sort Thank you all. I think that's a really effective range of different words to encompass what the LGO experience is like. Um, so we only have a few minutes left, but I wondered maybe Sharona, if, if there's perhaps one or two questions that we could answer now. Um, and then, you know, something to keep in mind to all of our listeners, we will have more events. Um, check our events page online for um, many that are they're posted and more to come that talk about different components of the LGO experience. So we'll definitely have another opportunity to meet and ask questions. But um, Sharona, with that in mind, is there is there one that you'd like to bring to our panel? Yes, uh, there is. Um, and I'm curious about this answer too, because I don't think we've ever asked a panel this. Um, but how would you describe the type of leadership that LGO tries to develop? Um, this could be both what you felt coming into the program, or you were attracted to the program, and also what you've learned since you've been in, in the program and been studying and in within this leadership programming. I can create a crack at it, and then you guys can join. One of the the mottos, mottos of um, Sloan School is you know, developing leaders who are principled and innovative. Right? So that's one of the things that I saw being emphasized is like that principled aspect of it. Like the, the leadership, uh, LGO leadership curriculum emphasized all that. It's not about the, the shareholders. It's about the broader stakeholders. So just have to uh, develop a set of uh, strong principles for your organizations and just as uh, yourself as a future leader. So that's, uh, that's how I uh, felt about the, the, what, what's been impact, uh, what's been emphasized on uh, LGO leadership perspective. 
think for for me, a lot of times in the two years, you're going to get a lot of technical content about, you know, being an ethical leader, uh, good leadership values, good leadership practices, communication as a leader. Uh, but at the end of, we take a leadership course throughout in the LGO curric curriculum and uh, writing my final paper this semester, I think the biggest thing that stood out to me is during your entire two years here, you're going to be reflecting on the kind of leader that you want to be. Um, if you've been in a leadership position before LGO, great, but I wasn't. So, you know, I spent a lot of time reflecting on, okay, how am I going to transition on what made me effective or, you know, uh, made me a good team member? And then how can I be a good leader uh, my next role? And there's not like an easy answer to that. It just takes a lot of self-reflection and you know yourself better than anybody else. So, um, Great, thank you guys. Oh, sorry, anyone else wanna to add to that? The only extra thing I'd add is that, um, although I did learn a good chunk already from the leadership uh, curriculum in the classroom, I think I've actually learned a lot about leadership from my fellow LGOs um, out of the classroom, especially. Uh, so I've, I've learned a lot about, you know, people who've had leadership roles in the past and people who haven't. And we've talked through some really difficult situations before and, and what, what we think we would do in those kinds of situations and what it means to be a principled leader in those situations. So um, I think the cool thing about LGO, uh, especially in comparison to maybe a traditional MBA is that you get that kind of extension of the curriculum with your really tight knit group of people, especially in the summer, you get to learn uh, from the people themselves that are your classmates because they have a lot to tell you too. So, yeah. Very true, thank you. Okay, maybe one more question to close us out. The final question for today's webinar. Sharona, what's it gonna be? Um, I think it's, it's gonna be, uh, why did you decide to go back to graduate school? Um, which I think a lot of uh, our, our listeners are kind of self-reflecting and trying to answer that question as well. I can go ahead first. Um, so I was primarily in startups before uh, coming to LGO, or that was the last thing I did right before LGO. Uh, and I started in engineering uh, and led an engineering group and kind of started dipping my toes more on the business side. Um, I was met with a lot of uh, resistance on that, especially uh, that I didn't have a business background uh, and that I was too young to really know what I was talking about. Um, so anytime there was any especially moral um, uh, uh, tension uh, for decision making, uh, you know, me not having that kind of background really was a disservice for me. Um, so as I was thinking about becoming an entrepreneur later, uh, and I was, you know, in meetings with investors at startups and seeing what it takes to, to convince investors that you are the kind of leader that they want to have at a startup, um, it became clear and clear to me that I needed to have more business chops, even if it's just on paper. But more than that, I needed to actually understand what certain things meant and how I could model certain things and how I could represent my business properly and all that. So although I was smart as an engineer, I was missing a lot on the business side. So I really did need a business. Uh, so I knew I needed to do an MBA. But on the flip side, uh, I found, especially at startups, that engineers very much value people who know what they're talking about. Uh, and a lot of engineers, especially in R&D, really value people who have done more than a bachelor's degree, um, especially when you're working in kind of R&D environments like the future of robotics that I'm in. Um, so I really needed to kind of get even more technical chops and really solidify that I had some expertise on the technical side while actually having some business acumen on the side too. So it was very obvious to me that LGO was the best program for that. And there are very, very, very few programs like this. So it really made a lot of sense uh, for me. Um, and I would argue that, you know, I wanted to go to one of the best engineering schools, if not the best uh, to get all this done. So in comparison to the other schools that offer similar programs, MIT was kind of a clear winner for me. Thank you, Juliet. Would anyone else like to add anything to that as we wrap up? 
Uh, I can just share why I wanted to come back. I think uh, for some of you, maybe in your mid to late twenties, I just like, it feels, it felt like the right thing to do. Um, maybe at Dow, uh, I didn't feel like I had the career trajectory that I wanted and coming to MIT, um, yes, of course, the degrees will be great, but then I also knew I would get to meet a great network of people. So it just was the next step for me to kind of grow as a person. Um, and I thought, I, I didn't think going to MIT would be a bad idea. So um, I think it was good. All right. Well, thank you. And, and a big thank you to our panelists today for joining and taking the time out of their schedules to share their advice and experiences with us. We really appreciate it. Congratulations again to Nalika and Randy graduating very, very soon. Um, and thank you all for listening today. We, we hope that this was helpful. And as mentioned, please stay tuned, check out the events page on the LGO website for more upcoming events, more to be posted as well, and, and other ways to connect with us. So have a wonderful day and looking forward to connecting again soon. Take care. All right, bye. Bye-bye.